As promised, we're going to do some follow-up uh, episodes on some of the episodes that we've done originally. Um, as we promised in the Ted Nugent episode, we are essentially going to be answering uh, your YouTube comments or reacting to your YouTube comments. So uh, for this little segment, uh, I just wanted to comment on what people said about our episode on Blue Oyster Cult Mirrors. Definitely a very contrarian uh, record for uh, you know for us to pick as as one of our episodes. And of course, as you see, I've got my fully signed copy of mirrors up here and this is my blue oyster cult book agents of fortune which is available at uh, at my site martinpopoff.com so um yeah so uh dirk uh says that uh summer album he's quoting me saying you know i called it a summer album you nailed it great record great band underrated but still one of the finest light rock and roll records of course um you know, he's referring to the fact that this was a, a, an, an excellent record to be playing in the summer. It was just bright. It had acoustic guitars. It was upbeat. Um, so, yeah, that's the way I remember the record for sure. And he, he calls it a light record. And, of course, uh, it is one that uh, that gets a lot of stick for being quite a... Uh, Quite a, quite a light album, not too many super heavy rockers on it. Uh, Elfman says, uh, oh my God, so interesting. BOC is a gem, thanks so much. Um, he also follows up, love to hear your review of Imaginos. That would be a very tricky one. I love that whole Imaginos concept. That was uh, 1988. I might even do kind of like an illustrated, and this is a long story, but I'm, I'm also into art too, and I'm thinking of doing some, some artworks based on Imaginos. But I don't know if I'm ever going to review um, that record. It's, uh, well, I mean, we might get to it one day, but it's a very complicated, stitched together record with a very complex story. Not one of my favorites. I don't like the production on it very much, which is kind of uneven, but um, yeah, very, very challenging and intellectual BOC record. So love, love seeing you mention that. Uh, Christopher Anderson says, I'm loving your choices. I had your collector's guide and read it over and over. I'm going to have to get the Agents of Fortune book. I'd be interested to see your pick on your eye heap. Mirrors is the album I'll play when I want to listen to BOC. Um, but not scare the girlfriend off. Yeah, I, again, definitely, uh, you know, songs on here that girls could like. Uh, there's there's some good stuff on here, stuff like In The and Great Sun Gesture and Mirrors and uh, uh, Moon Crazy. Um, funny you mention your eye heap. Uh, that is one that uh, that me and Marco and Nick have discussed as a, as a band to do. And I think if we did that... Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I might be on uh, on the hot seat again and possibly do something like uh, Abominog, um, which is not uh, something that's considered one of the one of the great heat classics, but one of my favorites. John Swartz, who's a complete uh, BOC expert um, buddy of mine. Another thing that happened when Mears came out was that BOC dropped the lasers in their live show. Not sure of the timing, but it may have also fueled perception that the band was going soft at the time. Yeah, very interesting point. Uh, like I say, John's a real BOC expert. I wasn't. I. I I never really kind of put the two together. I'm not so sure about that. I actually saw the band on the Mirrors tour uh, as well. Um, you know, it might be actually something that shows that the band uh, was maybe cheapening out um, and that things were not going so great for them, which was definitely the case because Spectres and the live album went gold. I think the live album went platinum. Um, and Mirrors uh, did not uh, certify at all. So, uh, you know, John might have something here in that probably people who went to see the show said, where are the lasers? Are these guys on the way out kind of thing? Um, okay, uh, Brian White says, you know, I've always liked Mirrors, seemingly more than many others do, but to me it just isn't quite in the same league as the absolute top end of the BOC catalog, treaties, agents, cult to source. So he's picked like three different eras there, basically. While I agree with Martin regarding the production and the summer feel of the album, I've always felt that Mirrors was a bit of a step away from the strengths of the band in terms of both composition and musicianship towards a sound that, while not necessarily mainstream in the typical sense of the word, especially for 1979, definitely had a clear opportunity for for mass appeal. To me, this was achieved a bit more successfully on Fire of Unknown Origin, which for my taste is pretty much exactly how a pop version of BOC really should sound. Regardless, I'm glad I stumbled upon this video and look forward to checking out more in the series. Cheers, Martin. Enjoy your writing. Very interesting points there, and I'll tell you, you're bang on because right now I'm going through the process of, uh, I'm reading in a bunch of my books to be uh, issued as audiobooks, and I'm halfway through uh, Agents of Fortune here, and uh, Albert Bouchard says some amazing stuff about how we deliberately tried to make this commercial album, um, it flopped, 
Uh, then we tried to make what he called a Mysterioso, an album where we knew there were no hit singles. And then, as you're saying here, um, they basically uh, got the balance right on Fire of Unknown Origin. Fire is a little bit funny and fragmented because it's got that whole tie-in with the heavy metal um, soundtrack album. But Burning For You is a big pop hit on there, and then it's got some heavy songs too. So it's got the dark and the light, and it seems to be uh, in, in a comfor comfortable BOC zone. And you're right, Mirrors does sound a little bit like the work of a different band. Um, so yeah, just a couple more here. It is a summer album. Mirrors and Rainbows Down to Earth was the soundtrack to my summer of 79. Of course, we did a Rainbow episode as well. Uh, Kurth Gerson says, can I have some of what you've been smoking? It must be bloody good stuff. So there you go. There's the contrarian effort, uh, a contrarian uh, ethic um, at play here. Great episode. And then finally, Kielsto says, did not change my mind one bit. Well, that's fine as well, because um, basically um, we know here at the contrarians that these are funny choices. Um, so there you go. Thanks again. Uh, we will... We will um, be back with more uh, episodes that are directly uh, related to the uh, the YouTube comments. And um, yeah, keep looking for those and keep looking for the uh, regular episodes of Contrarians. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.